thank you guys for coming. I uh, really appreciate it. You know, when you, as a designer, when you come to a dev conference, you always know that something's going to happen. Either nobody's going to come or you're going to say something that's totally stupid or something like that. So I really appreciate you coming and I hope this is going to be informative for you. Um, are you guys from OpenWRT community? Just show me your hands or a little, kind of. You work, you, you've seen OpenWRT. So you've seen Lucy. So I don't have to tell you what it is, right? Or maybe a little, okay, I'll just, That's, just a little, but, fine. But we have uh, online listeners also. Sorry? We have online listeners also. Just Lovely. a few words you can explain. Hello to everybody at home. Um, okay, um, so OpenWRT is, a, is a basically an operating system for embedded devices, like routers that we as tourists make, or it can be used for smart home bridges, or many, many other things. Right, and Lucy is a graphical interface that's running on top of OpenWRT and helps users to, you know, configure the devices in a simpler way than through a terminal. Right, and the reason why I'm here today is I would like to use Lucy as an example of how design can help improve the experience of our users, of the users of our products that are based on OpenWRT or other open source technologies. So please don't take me wrong. I don't want to be rude at Lucy or OpenWRT. I think those are great piece of work, great piece of software, but I'm just using it as, as an example. So this is me. I am an industrial UX UI designer, so I'm not a developer. I can't code. And, but I have a lot of experience with interfaces, with industry interfaces like routers or uh, handheld detectors or, uh, or other stuff. So this might be interesting to you that there actually are designers that are focusing on the hard tech. Why does design matter? Well, good design means more money. And even though we're talking open source, it means, you know, the open source is being used by companies, for-profit companies, companies that need to make money to pour it back into the open source development. And McKinsey found that companies that have good design actually have two to three times more revenue than those who didn't, who don't. Well, this is a pretty significant number. Also, uh, Mr. Pressman, uh, as a, a you know professor, at some U.S. university uh, and CAT CAM center, he said, for every dollar that you don't use to solve design problem during the design phase, you pay ten more during development and hundreds more when you manage to launch the device with the design problem embedded. So it's worth tech like design. Good design also means less support, which is crucial because. We as open source rely on communities, on volunteers to provide support. And if they have less work, then they can probably do it better. This just behind me is a return on investment calculation for, you know, fewer calls to a support line and the amount of millions of dollars that a simple investment into that, into a UX improvement can bring. Also, uh, no one ever said, I like buying devices that are hard to use. Even a tourist, I sometimes say, okay, well, I have my terminal and I can do anything I want in my terminal. Yes, you can. That's true. Uh, terminal has two problems. One is the learning curve because home users and even professional users often don't want to learn how to use it. And the second one is feature discovery. If, you, if somebody you know, gives you a terminal and connects you to a, a device, you don't know what the device does. And you can you know, read through all the configuration and through all the packages and try to find out how is it hooked up. But if I show you a user interface of this thing, you've probably never heard about a Ripax device. Yeah, that's fine. It's a SCADA radio router. You don't have to know about it. But if you have a look at the menu, you probably already know what its capabilities are. It has a radio, Ethernet, it has some security features, VPNs, it has a, a cellular module, stuff like that. So instantly you know what the device is capable of. And that's a huge advantage of graphical user interface. Modern UI requirements. 
guys, um, I have just four examples, but there's a huge amount of stuff. So just for just a few things. Quick responses. In the 80s, it was 1983, I believe, it was Mr. Doherty in IBM. He said, I want to do this research, and he did it, and found out that two seconds, which was a standard for a response from a computer system at that time, is way too long. Like, I'm going to let it sink in. Not to fall asleep, just to sink in. Two seconds at that time. Two seconds was regarded as an okay response time from a computer system. And he said, okay, well, it's, 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 it's wrong. You know, people are constantly waiting for the computer to give stuff back. And he, he came up with this 400 milliseconds, which is not really important. But what is important for us is that the response time of the system is crucial for the experience. So if we build a, a user interface, it has to be snappy. It has to be quick. And there are tricks to do that, like lazy loading, which you have there on the animation. Also, this is just one of many, many user experience principles that you can uh, have a look at uh, if you scan the QR code on the slide. It leads to lawsofux.com, and it's a very good resource for those of you who are interested in user experience, which all of you are because you came to this talk, right? Okay, so have a look. It's really, it's really interesting. It's really fun. Second, responsive design. Everybody knows responsive design. Do you guys know responsive design? Yeah. Yeah, everybody knows that. But yeah, and then they come to me and tell me, hey, David, our router is configured for my computer. We don't need a mobile responsive design, right? Wrong. Responsive design is not about the stuff, you know, having a hamburger menu somewhere in the corner and being workable on mobile. It means that whichever size of screen I have, the interface works. So in the future, when I have a smart fridge and it has a web browser and I want to connect to my router through it, I can do that without a problem. Also, more practical you know, uh, situation when you have a documentation on one half of your screen and on the second half of the screen you have the UI. You want the UI to be functional, not to scroll horizontally back and forth. It doesn't make any sense. And, and there's no reason to do that using current technologies. So yeah, responsive design. Also, as designers, we design interactions. We don't design pages anymore. We're interested in what the person, what our user wants to do and how he or she achieves that. So the whole journey. And, and this animation on the screen is a nice example of that. Like you could put a, a form there, yeah? You could put a form with four fields, like who you know, should pay how much, but you could also do it in a better way. Yeah, you can lead the person through the process. So it's more convenient and faster and, and better for the user. Also, we should work with the feedback. You know, people want, are, are expecting a response. You know, when you poke at someone, he screams at you. And with the software, it's similar. So uh, when you click a button, and you expect the device to do something, you don't want to you know, look at the screen you know, waiting for something to happen. No, you want feedback. Like the, the refresh button up there. You, know, you click, it shows you, okay, I'm working, then it blinks green, okay, I've succeeded, and it goes back. It's really small interaction, and it, by the way, it's called micro interaction for that matter. Uh, but it tells the user what is going on. And if you just imagine that it you know, flashed red, you would probably understand that it didn't go right, right? And you would expect a notification with some error, right? Cool. So instant feedback, it's, it's important. If people expect it and it helps them work with the software, with the devices we create. Which brings me to OpenWRT Lucy. Lucy was founded in 2008. And the initial reason for the project was to because they needed a, a free and clean web user interface for OpenWRT. And there was some genesis before that, but it's not really important for, for this talk. Now, Lucy has multiple themes. This is the Lucy Bootstrap theme, which is fairly popular. Uh, it's being used, we, we use it on tourists, by the way, I believe, yeah. 
There's also a Lucy OpenWRT 2020 theme, which is currently in development, and it's like the modern theme for OpenWRT. This is how it looks. And I've recorded a quick interaction of adding a wireless network in Lucy 2020. And I'd like you to have a look at that. Just... Right. So, uh, as you probably feel yourselves, the, the interaction was not ideal. Yeah? And I just summed it up to, uh, there's a problem with hierarchy, that the networks that are actually dependent on the network adapter visually don't seem to be. Yeah? They are all in the same column. There's this confusion with, what, what is the primary action? What, what should I click? All the, the buttons have colors, are all blue, different shades of blue. What, what, what is the most important one? What is you know, going on with those tab sections? Did you, did you notice that there are two tab sections on top of each other and you can click, you can change both of them? And it, you know, the, the whole model window starts showing completely different stuff. And then there's a problem with what happened after I clicked save, because nothing did. Just to, you know, just just to tell you, nothing did happen, and until I applied the changes at the bottom of the screen, which I couldn't see because there were you know all those networks there, I guess you see. So yeah, I'd say that there is a, a problem with with the interface, and well, so let's redesign it, right? That's that's what we do. Like in you know when something doesn't work, let's redesign it. Okay, so let's redesign it. Uh, is this better? Yeah. Someone says yes, 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 yeah, I like it better. I like the colors. No, it, it actually is not. This thing may look different, but the interaction is basically the same. So we didn't change anything. We basically did the same thing that the guys from Lucy did when they changed the bootstrap for the 2020 theme. Nothing changed it. So. The solution to this problem is actually to redesign the whole interaction, not just the page or the, the, the colors or the buttons or whatever. So, after a uh, mere 12 minutes of me talking to you here, I got to the point of this talk, which is cool. So, uh, how would, could we approach it? So, first, first part of it is the user interface itself. In a modern user interface, we want to use the real estate in an efficient way. So we want to have a top bar, which is being used, not just being there, blue. We also want to have the most critical actions available on mobile, because mobile users are not like second grade users who want to have everything hidden in a hamburger menu because that's convenient, because it's not. Yeah. Also, we needed to fix the visual hierarchy. Of the interfaces, so the you know the the gray area, the gray box is the network adapter, the, the physical device, and the white boxes in there are the the networks that can be configured and added and removed. Also, if you if you if you look closely, you see that there is a a join button. What would you think the join button on a Wi-Fi interface does? Just show that me. That's user testing, by the way. Yeah, what would you say? What does it do? Join a Wi-Fi network, brilliant. Previously, this button was called scan. If I asked you the same question, what does scan do at a Wi-Fi interface? It scans for the networks. Yeah, that's true, it does scan for the networks because you need that scan to join it. But the ultimate goal of the, of, of the window is to join the network. So these things, like, like a microcopy, is extremely important. One thing I want to st uh, this, you know, uh, focus... <sighs> one thing I want you to focus on, uh, one last thing, is the switch. 
previously, you could see that there was a enable and disable button. If you clicked enable, it would change to disable, right? You, you probably saw it in software sometimes. It's, it's kind of stupid because button doesn't have a state information. It doesn't tell you whether is it on and off or, or on or off. It only tells you what the action is. So if you use a button for reboot, it's okay. Well, it reboots the stuff, yeah? Or switch off or whatever. Make it blue, click button. But a switch gives you, you know, a state. So you know whether is it on or whether is it off. So in this case, this is much better component to use from the UX perspective, from design perspective. Right, so uh, just to sum it up very quickly, uh, you use design patterns, you want to use design patterns. People expect user area to be in top right corner, to log in, to log off, to you know, access their account. You know, Lucy has it in bottom left corner, which can work and people find it at some point, but there's no reason to change that. Yeah, so use design patterns. Efficiently use the screen real estate because nobody wants to stare at a blank screen, especially on mobile when you know real estate is real premium. Add hierarchy, clean up actions. You know people need to know what is a primary action, what is destructive action, and what are all other actions. And in this case, adding a wireless network is the primary action. That's what you came here to do, probably. Yeah. Also, if you have a brand color, don't splash it on everything. Just like a general rule. Cool. So, uh, add new wireless network interaction. So here is a recording, and if you want to, you can scan the QR code and try it on your own device. But basically, you get a modal window, which doesn't have the tabs, but it has those collapsible sections. Those collapsible sections can be un uncollapsed, of course, if you want to, um, like that. And it has a clear set of buttons, which is a primary button, which is apply, and there is a stash button, and there is a delete button. It gives you feedback that something happened, and you see it instantly that there is a, a new network added. Right? If you have a look at the second animation, I did the very same thing, but instead of apply, I used the stash button, which caused, what would you say? What did it do? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, because, well, actually, Lucy has this stash function as a default. It, it makes sense, it makes sense, because when you do a, you know, a complicated task, not something trivial like adding a network, you want to do many things and then, you know, push them to the device altogether, which is fine. But people need to understand what is going on. So when you allow them to click save, when you just have save in your interface, people think it means to save stuff, which is normally the, the end game. You know, when you save stuff in, in Word, that's, that's the end of it, right? There's no, you know, push to disk. Yeah, there's just save. So you need to uh, think about a microcopy uh, on the buttons, on the interaction, so it works, right? Cool. So this, this little thingy down there is blinking on me, which I guess is okay. So let's go to the final summary. Guys, all four of you and all of you back home, you know, in front of your computers, please know this. Changing colors, shapes, buttons, buttons, and whatever rarely improves user experience. Rarely improves, yeah. You want to design whole interaction, not just a page with some forms and stuff. You want to design for mobile first, because going larger is, is, is easy. Going smaller is real hard, and it's sometimes in, impossible. You know, have a look at any interface you know, which has, you know, tables in it. If you take a table and try to push it on mobile, you will end up with horizontal scroll bar nobody wants to use. Yeah, so this is an example of interest. It's really easy to put something in a table, but you will never get it to a smaller screen. Follow web patterns, uh, design patterns when you can. And of course, experiment, test, as we did a few, few minutes ago. And iterate your designs so they're better and your users enjoy using them. Thanks for coming. You're brave. 
you know, on the DEF conference going to a design talk, but I appreciate it. I hope you enjoy this. And if you have any questions, please do ask. Yes, if you have questions, please raise your hand and I will give the mic. No questions? Uh, I have one. Go for it. Uh, what you uh, outlined, uh, it would be a great improvement for Lucy. Uh, is it a, an experiment? Is it an ongoing development or is it just an idea? Well, when I first saw that there's a, a open source conference in Hungary, I was like, OpenWRT is from Hungary, kind of. So I was like, okay, well, we need to go and, you know, kind of kick the hornet's nest. Yeah, that was my, that was actually my, my reason for submitting this talk. So, so it's not being developed. I actually haven't met, haven't seen people who are working on Lucy. I was hoping to meet them. I was hoping to kind of, you know, kick the hornet's nest and maybe have them contact me, reach out. We are doing open source. We are benefiting from Lucy a lot. And I'm pretty sure we'd be happy to, to pour some work into it. Yeah. And this is a prototype, is a demo, it's untested. So I'm pretty sure there are many little things that would need ironing out through, you know, user testing phase. Yeah, at this point, there's just a raw design that I created to make you say, oh. Uh, is this something that's going to be pushed back to open WRT or something like packaged so you could try it on like ordinary routers? Or is it going to be your interface in Turris? Um, as a matter of fact, neither. Uh, this is, well, this was created just as a demo for this talk. And we, as, as tourists, we have our own operating system, which is like a simplified, um, you know, that's not, not really simplified, Lucy. It's like a simple operating system or user interface that you will find on TP-Link or something similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with a, with a small amount of functionality that's simple enough to use by like a regular home person. So, so you did already redesign Lucy. And you got ideas along the way. No, that no, no. Is the well, it's it's not really. Talk. It's it's more like a, uh, a separate, okay. separate software. It's not it's not based on Lucy. Like on tourist routers, you you run Reforis, which is our user interface, and then you run Lucy like in parallel. Okay. Yeah. So we will be redesigning our own system mm -hmm. using this approach, mm -hmm. and and we are open to help. You know, to, we want to help the community. If the you know guys from Lucy decide that they'd like our help, we would be very happy or more than happy to to work on Lucy as well. They could benefit from it. Like that stash button was really an eye opener. Lucy has made me stupid in its own kind of way, and I would have never thought like save. Okay, I learned what it is good. Yeah, yeah, it could it could be, and there's uh, many many things. That the, the the whole point of design good design is that it's that simple, and you just don't know that somebody designed it for you. But, you just use it. And it stops being the same thing suddenly. Right. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Cool. Okay, we don't have online questions, so uh, if there is no more uh, open point, then I would like to thank you for your presentation. Well, I thank you.